Our topic for today is one that is absolutely vital to understanding situations of conflict, and I think in general to institutional or organizational success. It's key to winning. It is Robert Boyd's concept of the OODA loop. That is to say, observe, orient, decide, act. Well, that just sounds like a process, but it's a loop because once we've acted, then we observe the results of our action. We reorient ourselves. We then decide what to do next. We act. Then, once again, we observe the results of the action, and so on. And so we keep getting feedback from the world about the results of our decisions. And it's a question of how quickly we react to that feedback. Sometimes what we do is working well, and we want to recognize it's working well. Allow that to feed back into our observation, our orientation, and our decision to continue, for example, or to move on to the next step. But sometimes it's not working out well. Sometimes we've got to recognize that the plan is failing, and we have to do something different or that our enemy has made a move that we weren't anticipating, or that a friend has done something we weren't anticipating, or in general, that things aren't going the way we thought they were going to go. Now, I've found that people are actually often really slow to respond to these things, slow to recognize that there are problems, slow to realize their plans aren't working out. And that becomes a real problem. You've got to recognize when things are not working out as you expected, and you've got to adapt. There is a tendency for all of us, I think, to think that things are really working out and to ignore contrary evidence, to ignore feedback that is coming back negative, and to just deny its relevance or to think, no, look, they're wrong, I'm right in the first place. Don't be like that. Realize that the world is giving you all sorts of valuable information all the time. Sometimes what you're doing is succeeding. Great. Important to know that. Sometimes it is not succeeding. It is even more important to know that. Because then you can change. Then you can improve. You can adapt. You can try to do something that's more successful. So we've got a process here. We observe the world. We look at a situation. We try to understand it. We orient ourselves in the sense of relating it to all sorts of things, our own goals, our own purposes, our own tendencies, and various things about the world that we know. We make a decision, we act, then we observe the consequences of our action. We've got a new situation. So one way to think about an action is that it's something like a function from some earlier existing situation to some new situation. We've got to then adapt to the difference that it's made, look at the results of our own action, look at how the situation in general has changed as a result of other people's actions as well, and adapt, reorient ourselves. So here is Boyd's diagram of his OODA loop. We begin with observations. We're receiving information from the outside world. We've got circumstances that continue to change, continue to unfold. We've got interactions between us and the environment, between our organization and the environment. We've got feedback from any earlier decisions and actions. We've got, in general, some set of principles, some rules, some ways of dealing with things. Some of those are built into our biological heritage. Some are part of our culture. Some are part of a more specific institutional culture. Some are our own habits. Anyway, all of those enter into our understanding of the situation. Then we orient by relating all of that to our own abilities, to our experiences, to any new information, the various things that result from analyzing what we observe and trying to come up with a deeper understanding of what's happening. We then formulate a hypothesis if we're thinking about this in terms of knowledge, or we decide if we're thinking about it in terms of action. And then we act, and we look at the results of that. When we look at the results, we then realize things are, have changed, we've got new information now, and the process starts all over again. It is something like a process of scientific discovery, a process of observing the world, relating it to the various things we know and think we understand, formulating a hypothesis, then actually experimenting to test the hypothesis, getting the results, and then adding that to our observations, reorienting, forming perhaps a new hypothesis, and so on. The idea in science is that this is a process that should lead us toward the truth, lead us to, toward a theory that remains stable because it withstands experimental test. 
Well, we want to do something like that in the world in general as well. We want to act in such a way that our understanding is enriched by the consequences of our action and enables us to act with greater information and more effectiveness in the future. Now, in the case of action, we may never attain the situation where we say, well, good, it's stable now. We can just keep doing that no matter what. The world keeps changing on us. Other people's behavior keeps changing. Our own tastes, our own preferences, our own dispositions may change. And so lots of things can happen that force us to revise things in the actual world when it comes to action. 